Hey babes and welcome back to the channel. This is Rambles and Makeup with your rambling host Dohi Sama. Today we're going to be doing a Bobazar inspired makeup look. So grab your brushes, grab your makeup, and meet me in the bathroom. Alright, so welcome back to the channels babes. I hope you've been well. Okay, hope you had like the best weekend ever and week because it is friday again yes so fun fact my mom <laughs> informed me of a way that they were taught to do makeup so i'm gonna follow her advice for this I start with concealer first all right so if you remember last week we talked about haiku haiku um i hope you put it on your list to watch it's a good anime so i wanted to talk about naruto this week but but there are so many layers that i feel like i need notes because i don't want to leave out important parts I don't want to leave out important parts. And then I'm going to forewarn you. I may not cover everybody because it's just, there's a lot of people in Naruto, okay? It's a lot of people, a lot of things to cover. But we're going to do our best. But so that'll be next week. So for today, we are going to be talking about a new anime, Tokyo Revengers. Now, I got into Tokyo Revengers about a year ago it was one of the first cosplays that i did i didn't have a makeup look for it but i will include some pictures of it uh, my mom made the shirt for me she did an amazing job so i i uh cosplayed two people um suya angry and Baji. Yeah, those were the two that I was trying to mimic. But I also like did it as a female as me. So, you know, I also had like the OC character. Anywho, the premise of Tokyo Revengers. This guy, his name is Takamichi. He is basically living in the slums. He works in like a local store, like a, it looks like a DVD store, if I'm not mistaken, video store. And basically, he learns one day that his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend, Hinata, had been killed. Um, and he could not believe it. And so he was walking to on this train platform and lo and behold he was pushed off like just off just just down and he looks up he sees the train and he's thinking like crap i'm about to die like i'm about to die alone there's nothing memorable about my life he's just going through it and somehow he doesn't die he gets up and like it's when he's a younger version of himself now older version takamichi has black hair um and the younger version of him has spiky blonde hair and he can't believe he's thinking to himself like i can't believe i used to look like that i can't believe that me and my friends all used to be this way and so he has a group of friends with him and they're pretty much trying to become a gang and they end up getting beat up because his cousin Takamichi's cousin had told him like how he was in this big street gang and he was so tough and a bunch of lies that they later come to realize are lies but it was too late because they messed with the wrong people and so they kind of became um like errand boys for the Tokyo Manji gang. Now, Takamichi realizes like he has a second chance to do right by Hinata 
and um he's very grateful for it and like so they start dating and she's like you've changed like she notices he is not the same him from his younger self so anyways he ends up meeting um uh, manjiro sano and ken ryuji draken draken and mikey and mikey ends up taking a liking to him because Takabichi can't fight for nothing, okay? He had to go up and get somebody. <laughs> he was getting whooped, just decimated. And so they catch wind of it, and the two captains come and put an end to it. And he's like, I like you, dude. You got some spunk. Like, we're going to be friends or whatever. So he ends up being forced into being friends with Mikey, but he's like, okay, we can, cool. Like, I can handle this. He then wakes up, and he's back at his home present time and that's when he runs into Hinata's brother who's like this is more than what you think it is sorry his name is Naoto Tachibani um and basically he's like I saved you I've been trying to time travel back and forth to save my sister from that accident because Basically, she got killed in, like, this explosion or something. And her brother is not convinced that, like, that is what happened. So, he's like, no, 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 you know. And so, Takamichi ends up telling him, well, like, I just time traveled. And this is what happened. And so, Naruto... It's like, all right, we can work with this. So basically, Takamichi is going back in time to try and reverse what happened with Hinata. The only issue is Takamichi's not really the only one. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Because even, I will say, for this one, I have started reading... A lot of the manga, but I'm not finished. And I have not started season two yet, so I don't really... But I've read most of the manga. So anyways, Takamichi is going back, and he's trying to find a way to infiltrate the manji gang. Because if he can infiltrate the gang and, like, get in their good graces, he... the Because the gang, the manji gang, was the one who killed Hinata. And he can't believe it. And so he needs to stop... Mikey from befriending this dude, this jerk face named Kisaki. We don't like him, okay? We I don't at me. We do not like this man. So <laughs> anywho, um he's going back in time. He ends up joining the game because he's able to like save them from a lot of events that happen and they don't understand how he knows what's going on but he does and he never tells him because right you shouldn't but um yeah he's out here takamichi is out here trying to save the world and so there's captains and ranks among this gang um the most notable members that really you see talked about are draken baji chief liu angry smiley they're a set of twins uh pa or pe he has a right hand that i can't call right now um and then there's another one that we have a heart for oh what is baby's name kazutora but he's not working there so he's takamichi is in this gang now and um he saved draken from like getting killed um and he helps them take down these other captains and <laughs> it takamichi is just funny because he will get his butt handed to him but he is determined to keep fighting anyway and i love it i we love to see it so takamichi is basically space jumping between part one and part two and he even has to like save the friendship between Draken and uh, Mikey because they're just being jerks about every little thing and, you know, caught up in their own funk. But so 
they all band together and I will even include Takamichi's friends because as always there's a lot of characters and I don't want to get too many names wrong so as Takamichi is jumping between back and forth he ends up meeting some of his friends like as he's older and one of them that he meets Sendo he goes and sees him and Sendo is basically uh, he ends up becoming this like right hand mob man for the Manji gang and so he owns this club and Takamichi's like you you own the club and so they talk and everything and the friend jumps off a building I know it is is rough so the friend jumps off the building and the girlfriend Hinata she still ends up dying so like he has to keep going back so then he's introduced to Kisaki he sees a younger version of him walking around and Kisaki is basically um wanting to join the gang and he ends up getting in the gang by I think like leaving another one and so Baji is like, I'm out. I don't want to be a part of this gang. Like, I don't trust this. I'm out. So Mikey's mad because Baji wants to leave, but Baji's not having it. So he leaves. And then this guy named Hanma steps onto the scene and he takes over another captain. And they end up making a gang called Valhalla. And let me just say, we are not supposed to love Hanma we love him he that child just needs a hug okay we <laughs> love him i've read some of the parts like of the manga and he's just he's funny he's goofy he's a little decrepit um anybody where it is like a grown man talking and they put hearts after things he say you know he got a dark side but it's okay um he to me he turns it around anywho so Hanma is taking over Valhalla and Kazutora is pretty much like his right hand man and they want to bring down the Manji gang. Now why they want to bring down the Manji gang is because Kazutora ends up going to jail. Kazutora goes to jail because all of them were friends. All of the captains that I mentioned plus Kazutora were friends. They were like the founding members of the gang. Kazutora decides one day he wants to surprise Mikey with a new moped because they, you know, love riding bikes and stuff. He breaks into a bike shop to steal a bike and the owner of the shop catches him, but the owner recognizes Baji. Before Baji could even, like, Tell Kazutora the owner is getting whacked with a wrench. The owner is Mikey's older brother. So Kazutora kills his brother trying to get him a gift and steal it after Baji told him no. But Kazutora blames everybody else. It's their fault. They did it. I'm the innocent one. I was trying to do something special for you. You're the reason I'm in jail. No accountability whatsoever. And so Kazutora is really trying to get back at Mikey. He wants Mikey dead too because he had to go to jail for a crime that he chose to commit for Mikey's birthday. But anyway, so uh, they invite Takamichi to the meeting and that's where he sees Baji. And once again, Takamichi just gets beat up. So Chief Yu comes and Chief Yu and Baji are best friends or were best friends and Baji was Chief Uyu's captain. He beats him up. And so Chief Uyu starts working with Takamichi to basically save Baji. So there's this big fight planned out. And then members, there's a lot of chaos among the group itself because Pa, Pa's friend wants revenge for him because Pa ends up in jail. Pe, I'm gonna put the names because I think I'm confusing both of them but he ends up in jail so they tried to kill Draken but once again Takamichi knew about it so he saved him so that made him rank up in the squad and 
and Hinata is like falling in love with him and he's jumping back to like normal present time and so um at the end of it there's this big fight that takes place between Valhalla and the Revengers and there's other people there that we get glimpses of and we know about who are um a bunch of different like gangs from Tokyo and one of them is Rindu and Ran and let me just say I am a sucker for people with long hair anyway so Ran I just I love him but his brother makes a comeback in the manga because when I saw the man bun I was like this is just chef's kiss so anyways they're all there scouting the gang fight to see pretty much who's gonna come out on top like which gang is the best and to like form connections well mikey is undefeated he has a kick on him that will send you to the hospital and so they're thinking like mikey's gonna totally destroy these people which is ironic because mikey's brother was the owner of the revenger gang before it was named i think like the black dragons but his brother couldn't fight worth nothing. He was a Takamichi, but he had heart. He had that heart. Okay, so people followed him and they loved him. So Mikey pretty much wants to create a gang like his brother. But Mikey just, I feel like he goes down the wrong path, mostly because Kisaki, but because like he don't really got that heart like his brother. So anywho, um, his sister is in love with Draken and she even at one point like staged it to make it look like she was with Takamichi, which resulted in him getting stomped by Hinata when she found them. But Draken was like, okay, are you done? Like cool wiki. But they they come around too. Anywho, so they've had this big fight. And Baji always knew Kisaki was a dog. So he goes up against him and he goes to fight Kisaki, but Kisaki ends up stabbing him. It doesn't go well. It's a very sad thing. And so at the end of it, Baji's basically telling Takamichi, like, I trust you to get this done. Like, nobody else can do it but you. Because, you know, you've looked after my friends, so I believe in you, which... I really hate that they killed Baji off, okay? I'm always be bitter about that. There's never going to be a right to make that right because I'm just bitter about it. But he dies. Um, and basically, Mikey, who had been down and out for the count, comes back and he's just like stomping on everybody. He takes out them and then when he gets to Kazutora, he's like, okay you belong to me like no matter what you think you're always gonna be part of the manji gang and so they kind of resolved that and kazuto is like i'm gonna atone for everything that, like i did and i had to do with this but so when draken goes to see him goes to see Kazuto, he's like, if you're thinking about killing yourself, like, I'll never forgive you because that's not a way to pay for what you did. Like, you need to make this right and we can move on. So that's kind of like a happy ending, right? But, there's a big but. Despite them having this plan done, hang on, guys. Okay. Despite, despite them having this done, when they grow up or when Takemichi is jumped back into the future, he goes to this dinner with like the older members of the gang, some of them. And like there's different people mixed in. There's another one. He's, um, oh man. He, it's him, his sister, and their brother. And their brother is abusive. And he blames them for like his mom's death. And he just beats the ever living crap out of them for no reason. Hakai is his name. But so he's there and we love him. We have soft spots for him too. But so. Kisuki is telling Chifuyu and Takamichi he wants to talk to them. So they leave, they go with him to talk, and basically 
it is discovered that like Takamichi is the one who ends up going corrupt. And I don't know, like Draken ends up getting put in jail because of Kisaki. Kisaki like blackmailed him. And then Chief of You gets killed and Takamichi basically ends up getting shot because Kisaki basically found out things against them. And Chief of You, I think they were working with the police and Kisaki caught wind of it. And so Chief of You was like, well, you turned astray, like you were getting really out of hand, so I had to do it. So this is on me, dog. They both die. So that's where part one ends. And then part two, the season two just started. But once again, I have not watched that, but I've read the manga. And so he wait, Takamichi wakes back up and is essentially like, I got killed. And he goes and tells Chief of You everything that happened and they're trying to replan again um like ways to stop this and if i'm not mistaken in one version kazutora comes and rescues them from getting killed off by kizuki but essentially kizuki is trying this is all happening because kizuki he admires takamichi like he looks up to him he wants power and control of the black dragons and he was in love with Hinata but because Takamichi basically like turns it around him and Hinata end up being a thing and like she never chooses Kisuke because she's in love with Takamichi which you can't force nobody to love you so basically Kisuke is always hopping back in time to kill her or, you know, to alter everything so that way he can take her out and blame it on the Manji gang when really it's just him being petty and everything like that. And so what I have seen so far from the manga was, and I've, I've also like read things out of turn. People have told me things that I shouldn't even know right now, but I do know it. So it is cool. But if I'm not mistaken, the brother, Shibuya's older brother, I'm going to have to name drop and picture drop. He gets introduced. Cause like I said, he's beating the family mad. Just, just being a jerk. He is introduced and he ends up becoming like this owner of a restaurant and he ends up helping them out there are some more people that get introduced like a bunch of um uh members from ran and rindu squad mikey's half brother gets shown up and he is just as decrepit as mikey oh and so it is not confirmed that anybody else can time jump but i suspect Mikey knows what's going on. We know Kisaki knows what's going on because he keeps trying to mess up everything. But in like certain instances where Mikey and Takamichi end, Mikey is either trying to kill Takamichi or kill himself. And it's just like, you don't have to be so angsty. So yeah, Takamichi is basically just sitting here trying to help out where he can. And it just seems like it is not going in his best eyes so Tokyo Revengers it, it is a funny anime but it's good it's worth it there's a lot of fighting like I said a lot of gang um like interpretations and if I'm not mistaken that is because the writer was actually in a gang he was in one himself and I will trigger one and say there are some talks of well lots of talks of death there's talks of rape and suicide. So if those things trigger you, I would say please don't watch that until you feel, you know, ready or comfortable. And then if you never feel ready or comfortable to watch it, then just wiki it and see, you know, how it ends. Because your peace of mind is more important than an anime view. But it is an anime that I absolutely hands down love the way it is unfolding everything about it the character development we are here for it and then just how they all grow up is just beautiful okay beautiful and so 
I would give that anime a hard 20. 20 out of 10. I don't even know if that's like legal affair, but that's what I'm going to rate it, friends. Okay, and I might have to turn the light on a little bit for this next part because I can't see my lines, guys. I will say things that I don't like about it is like if y'all could save all these other people, why y'all couldn't save Baji? You know, like why Baji had to go? I am seriously going to be so bitter about that probably for the rest of my life because... I wanted Baji to live, okay? He should have lived. He could have helped the gang out. I don't know how, but I feel like y'all are in the business of saving everybody in Hinata. So save Baji. He deserves rights. Okay, and then my, oh, my favorite out of it, well, I don't know. I have a lot of favorites in this anime. I don't want to lie. But the twins, Angry and Smiley, I love them. I feel like they are precious. One thing that I really appreciate is the fact that they sport afros. Because, yeah, representation all the way. Oh, and then the sister... Shibuya's sister, or Hakai's sister, she ends up having a crush on Takamichi, which I think is just the greatest thing ever, okay? Because he's such a nerd and he's such a dork, but because he stands up for them and protects them, she's so smitten and so soft. And I'm just like, if Hinata wasn't there, you'd have shot... How could I forget? Mitsuya. There's another character in there who's a captain. His name is Mitsuya. And that's my husband. One of them. One of like 15. But he is a purple haired man who creates clothes. He has like his own sewing committee. Sewing committee. And the girls that work for him. Oh man, they are invested in him. He is Hakai's captain and he makes like all the uniforms and he um he's very caring, he's very sweet and it, honestly him and Draken are a lot alike and I even saw like a a snippet of the manga where he was talking about how he'd follow Draken forever because they were both like two dragons in the same you know like they represented each other and I was just like yes I love it I love this development but and he has two younger sisters and he takes care of them he is like their parent because their parent is never around and I really love it and one day he was complaining about like the fact that his parents are always gone and stuff and Draken's like well at least you know, you have parents to miss because Draken, he's raised in a brothel. So pretty much those women in that club is his home. And to me, that is just a sad because his mom did not, um, she didn't want him or something like that or she was a worker. Don't quote me. I'll go and look it up for sure, but yeah and so because of that they took him in and like he has a room up the stairs and it's pretty much just him and people are like you're so free and he's just like i hate it here okay these people are the only family i've ever known but like i said they're all pretty much good characters the only one that i won't vouch for or ever say that i like is hands down Kisaki because you are out here making lives hard for everybody. And I don't like the fact that he's so sly and he gets away with stuff like you need to be reprimanded. Also, maybe it's just me that I got a personal like vendetta against this man, but he's not welcome around, okay?
That's just my take on it. But yeah, guys, that's Tokyo Revengers. I'm trying to think of like other little parts of the anime that I may have missed out on. I know that like, there's a big festival that takes place. Um, you can watch it on Crunchyroll. Or at least that's where I watched my episodes. I don't think there is anywhere else where it is available right now. And then also, apparently, they're making a live action movie. They've made it, and it's going to be on Crunchyroll as well, which I'm very excited to see because some of the live actions, they've been questionable. Like, I did not like Death Note, the live action, too much gore like a lot of gore and I just don't understand why they were so heavy on that emphasis um the plot was okay it was decent bleach was pretty good I did like that one it was it was a nice adaptation to me but then again with Netflix you can't really expect much now can you but it was pretty good pretty good guys so all of that like I said is on Crunchyroll you should Go check it out and let me know what you think. The manga, I read it online. Um, there's a few spams and stuff, but I mean, the manga comes out clear. You're able to understand it. There are some websites dedicated just to that where they are in English. So, and I'll probably link drop a few where you can go and read it. But yeah, guys, that's my review of it. It's a very good anime. It's very suspenseful. And I mean, sometimes you're sitting here like, but why did you think that that was okay? And why are you sitting here? Why are you sitting here talking to people like that? And why are y'all letting him talk to y'all like that? Okay. <laughs> it's a bunch of just craziness. But good nonetheless. So for this last part, I'm probably cut out and cut back in. Um, I just got some fashion touches and then my lipstick and we'll be done, friends. All right, hey babes, editor Dohi Sama here. And listen, I don't have too much more to say about this anime, but one thing I wanted to say was I was around my mom, so I had to be respectful of like the words I chose to use. But if she decides to view this video, I'm so sorry, lady. This anime is a thirst trap. Do you hear me? Okay, Draken, okay, just to name a few. There's one named Madarame that's like, you a little decrepit too, but I'd hold you. You know, there are so many people in this anime that I just want to hug and like love on once they are mature. You know what I'm saying? But it is really a good anime, guys. It is a bit, it makes you rage if you are like me and you get emotionally attached to characters it is very hard to watch like some of the things that happen and that you go through but i still say it is worth it because why not enjoy something even if it makes you feel all those emotions takamichi he's still my ace one like I believe in him. He can do whatever it is that he wants to do in this world, okay? And though I haven't finished the anime, I firmly believe he can turn it around and, like, make it better, all right? So don't count him out. Don't be too hard on him or any of the other characters. Kisaki, we still want to fight him. He can get these hands. I know I stressed this out earlier, but I don't think I stressed this out enough. He can get these hands. Hey, do you hear me? I do not get Kizuki can like jump off a cliff. All right. Like <laughs> I do not like that man, but I'm gonna let me get back 
to the present time because it looks like I'm about to finish up. But yeah, I just wanted to include these key points. Takamichi is superior. Kisaki can choke. Okay, we don't like him with his hockey eyebrows. All right. And Maki, he still needs love because everybody only wants to use him anyway. Even Kazutora deserves love. Okay. Point is, everybody can have love except for Kisaki. Don't give him love. But yes, let's jump back in, guys. I see evolution happening but thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy it please give me please kiss me with the like button please subscribe follow ring the bell for notifications to see when I post more I did not expect it to be so um I did not have to expect to have to concentrate so much while I talked and did the face paint because normally I'm doing makeup so it's easier to do those looks but I ain't complaining we're gonna get better at this next week I promise we're gonna talk about Naruto hopefully I included more like little notes and things sorry guys notes and things in the voiceover or whatever I decide to do. But thank you for rocking with me. Thank you for hanging out with me. This has been a Bulbazar inspired Pokemon look. And until next week, remember the Lord bless you. I love you. I've been your rambling host, Dohi Sama. Have a great weekend, guys.